All right, absolute drama and pandemonium unfolding in the uh, Copa versus Wright Satoshi identity appeal right now uh, in the online world. So this is Gavin. We covered the trial and uh, all the cases and the daily trial update in extensive detail. So uh, while there's there's not been a ruling or an actual finding, and that's not going to be till October till we really get something from the court, I can at least share the limited information that I do have. And a couple of exciting things to start with. One is that Wright is now, uh, Dr. Wright is now, uh, he's now causing an issue with his, his counsel, Shoesmith, who represented him in the trial. So I'm going to show you know, what he's saying about them. He's also claiming a, a, a violation of the 2010 uh, Disability Act. It's called the 2010, um, you know, Act, which is similar. It's a Quality Act of 2010 under the UK, which is, a, I believe that's what he's, he's claiming. So meaning that he, he didn't get a reasonable accommodation for his disability. So that could be a potential grounds. And then also he's raising what might be part of the appeal with uh, some of the uh, the evidence that got in improperly. So I can kind of cover some of that. Now, let me just also give a quick plug on Friday. I'm, I'm potentially doing a space to cover all this. So we could discuss it in an open forum with a bunch of speakers. So stay tuned for that. Friday, 11 o'clock is the proposed time right now. I just want to get a confirmation from speakers, see if it's going to work for people. All right. So now before we share the screen, before we share the screen, uh, you know, rather, rather a turn of a twist or turn of events, this uh, apparently didn't show up in the trial at any point because I never saw it. And I don't know if it was just in evidence and the court looked at it, but but someone leaked a video of Dr. Wright sharing his his uh, screen with his passport, logged into the Satoshi uh, Gmail, the Satoshi Nakamoto email account, the one that was operating in 2009. And, and, he, sh and he showed his uh, credit card, his credit card purchase of that. I think that's what it was. It's a, it's like a $500 purchase in 2009 paying for the, Oh, paying for the domain. That's what it was. And he's logged in paying for the domain. And then he shows his passport doing it at that time. And it's right there. So, so that's just compelling news and never, never was, uh, was clear in the trial. We never saw that, but it could. So where it was in the case, I, we don't know. We're going to, we're going to have to wait and find out. So, all right, let's share the screen and go through what's up all the crazy trauma and stay tuned for Friday. Yeah. So here's the post says, uh, last night, Shoe Smith decided to reach out to third parties and try to control me. They didn't come to me. They went to other people that they thought would control uh, control by post. Well, unlike the Dr. Wright account, this account is completely mine. The former law, A former law firm attempted to tell me what I can and can't disclose is not only unprofessional, but offensive. Every time they react, they will feel pain. I, I see if I see a wince from them, uh, if they react to any to anyone ever again about me, gloves are off. From now on, demonstrate what I mean. For now, to demonstrate what I mean. All right, so that's what he said. And then he went through a lot of different posts, which I don't understand. Uh, so we'll just have to discuss this on Friday. So I'm not gonna, I'm not, not gonna comment on all this stuff or whether any of this stuff is relevant to the appeal, uh, whether it's whether it's the court ruled on these items uh, are yet to be determined because any of this stuff uh, whether but let, let's say that this post here is relevant to the appeal and it was in the court file and and the court said overruled then yeah dr wright can can uh, that that can be considered on appeal if this is just something new uh, that he's bringing up now then it's going to have to be brought up in a separate suit it's not i don't see how it would be relevant to the appeal so we'll see we'll have to see what the strategy is here now a couple of other things so he's got uh, on his other Jeez. All right. So let's say, let me be perfectly clear. If I hear a single peep from your fir firm or if you uh, commute. Okay. So we went through that. So let me just pause that for just a second here. And we're going to. Yeah. Dr. Ed also posted how he said, I feel no hate, no anger. My decisions aren't driven by emotion, but by calculation. When I release information, I do it deliberately knowing exactly what I'm doing. This is not the same. This is not some impulsive reaction. It's part of a larger plan. And make no, no mistake, it's only the beginning. So while uh, while some of these posts seem to be, uh, you know, impulsive, apparently they're not. And they're that's what he's, what he's saying. Everything is, everything, because there's a massive amount of posts. I'm not even going to begin to go through this uh, that he's releasing. Um, so we can discuss it on Friday, but I think some of the, some of the most compelling are him now turning on Shoesmiths, which was the, the attorney that represented him at the trial court, you know, so, 
uh, it's rather, you know, rather, rather insane. You know, I can't even. Yeah. So uh, uh, what is strategy? What's his strategy to win on appeal? Uh, well, apparently he's ra- he could be raising this this 2010 uh, Equality Act um, about people with disability not getting a reasonable accommodation. That could be a possibility, a possible strategy. He's also talked about the uh, the Madden report getting in as as uh, improper evidence. I think he's also talked about Rosenthal, the Rosenthal report, and his testimony get, getting in and being discredited with the latex files and not having the qualifications, not reviewing exactly what he's supposed to review. That was ruled on by the court. So, and then he's also talked extensively about Ager Hansen being a bad actor, and and he and he's stated how Ager Hansen was the, uh, you know, was handling these law firms before. Apparently it was another law firm that, that before Shoesmirth that Ager, Ager Hansen was handling and Ager Hansen never had authority to take instruction from them. That's what he's claiming. So, so what his strategy to win this case is on appeal uh, is a, uh, right now it's a, like a lot of things that are going against that are out there. So it's, it's really hard to see. So apparently there's a 500 page document, but I will say that, you know, in order to win an appeal, it's gotta be very specific on the objection made at the trial court and the objection overruled. And then the pointing to the judgment where this finding was made, and then this specific uh, finding was improper, a, a, a fact, and it was abuse of discretion. It was, it was a, and it's reversible error. So appeals are highly uh, technical and and in practice very very difficult to do, and that's why you pay a you know whatever hundred grand or I don't even know two hundred. I don't know how much it would cost for him to appeal this case. Uh, we, we we estimated a million. I mean I think David Pierce told me that it would be less than that, but it would be a lot. And that's because it's extremely technical in practice. Well, you could be an expert in the law if you don't have the practice experience in knowing what the court is going to be looking at and be highly challenging because no, no new issues can be brought up on appeal. That's for sure. So, uh, so that being said, look for a space on Friday. We're going to break this down in more detail with speakers who have a lot more uh, insight into the uh, actual history of, of Bitcoin than I do, because when it comes to, looking at some of these, these screenshots and whatnot, um, you know, people like Kurt and, and Alex, Vell, they're, they're going to know a lot more about the exact facts and technicalities behind that. Jack Pitts, they'll know about that more than I will. So, well, I could comprehend a little bit of the law here and what he's doing in strategy wise. So I can add value on that. Uh, but, you know, also be mindful. There's a, there was a, um, on a side, on a side note, I'm just going to comment. I was on an X space last night. Donald Trump was on with a crypto guy, Farouk, and so was his family. I was highly impressed by Eric Trump, by the way. Uh, I've heard Don Jr. talk a bunch of times, but Eric Trump, when I heard him on the X base, wow. I mean, and I'm not saying this to, to promote them. I'm just saying I was highly impressed by the way he spoke. I guess when I hear it, when I, I've seen him spoke before, speak before on, on TV or whatever, you know, uh, he, he just wasn't the same on video as he was on audio. So he was much more compelling to listen to than he was in a video so some people are just gifted in radio and they 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 come across really like incredibly good for audio and not as good on video and that was my compare my impression of eric trump he was incredible on the audio and so what it was about was about uh, the adoption of like this DeFi, DeFi and crypto and bank uh, making it banking products and so while it was well it was very compelling uh I, I give notice to them if they ever watch this video that I said, there's a, there's something that needs to be uh, before, before getting into. I mean, because like the Trump's being so, uh, so good in business and so experienced and having such great law firms. Uh, I, I, it just surprises me that they don't go and do a freedom to operate, you know, get a freedom to operate search before starting a business in what would be called decentralized finance. Why wouldn't they, why wouldn't they do that? I don't know. Uh, we'll see, because uh, as we've talked about before, we know uh, we know that there is a very high likelihood of uh, of patents being surrounding that entire industry. You know, we've got the big 800 pound, pound gorilla end chain, and then we've got Reggie Middleton's patent, which may be the, the the DeFi patents. So, you know, it would be very wise for a new business to uh, be sure that they're not uh, they've got a freedom to operate before 
uh, getting into starting some large business, spend a bunch of money. I'm just surprised that the Trumps wouldn't have done that first. All right. So yeah, back to the, uh, but back to the trial, you know, be sure to look over the space on Friday. The exciting news there is that he share Craig Wright is now sharing the, uh, the login to the Satoshi paying for the Satoshi uh, website. I guess the big, Oh, the Bitcoin doc, doc, I'm, I'm screwing up the facts here. The Bitcoin.org website. That's what he was paying for. And he's got a, a picture of him doing that and his passport next to it. Satoshi on top, it says. So whether that got into a court or it's admissible, we'll have to see. Uh, I'm sure the guys on Friday will have a much better you know, idea of the facts. So look for that. And then also the drama unfolding with him now turning on shoe Smiths and giving them a, like a legal notice on, on X about how, you know, if they, if they do this again, then they need to take notice of the consequences. So, I mean, if you like high drama in the courtroom, now is the great time because it's all like unfolding on the, on the X. We don't even know what's going on on appeal, but he's just dropping so much stuff. Uh, and, you know, I did, I did post that video on Saturday, so I'll leave it at the end in a reply to him about how loving, you know, loving haters and, and my, my candid reply to that. So I'll put that at the end. Everybody hasn't watched it. It's a, it's a, it's a thoughtful response to his uh, very, very thoughtful and uh, sensitive uh, response to my, my, uh, my tweet. So, all right, that's all I got. See you guys on Friday and I will see you at the top.